Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me once again John Kaiser. John has been writing a subscription-based newsletter since 1994 when he launched Kaiser Research Online. And you can and you should go to kaiserresearch.com, consider signing up for John's letter, and uh, I think he also has some interesting content there as well. Thanks for joining me, John. Jay, it's a pleasure. Really good to talk to you again. Um, 2019 was a pretty good year for, for most of the resource sector, I think. And, um, well, I mean, it depends. It, it depends at what stage you get in on them. And I think there's lots of companies that haven't yet uh, gotten onto the radar screens of most investors, uh, certainly the smaller cap ones. But uh, talk to us a little bit about what was your best what was your best pick, or what was your best get your best uh, stock pick in 2019? Well, Jay, I kicked off 2019 with 20 new favorites, uh, uh-huh. and and these are across a wide spectrum of of, of categories: uh, some gold, uh, some rare earths, uh, all all over the map. The whole group was up only 9.7 percent at the highest, and that was in late February. And right now, the group is down 19. So Hmm. this group, although I love most of them and will continue them, uh, they've had delivered a pretty dismal performance. The best was Renaissance Gold, which uh, managed to peak up 141% in the summer when we had that gold uh, movement breathing life back into the sector. Mm -hmm. And they had a whole bunch of uh, programs. uh, You know, it's a prospect generator farm out company. Mm -hmm. They farmed it out. uh, uh, But then it's now up only 88%. uh, and uh, because th- these projects so far have resulted in no reportable results. In other words, mm-hmm. no, nothing special. The other one that we had the highest hopes for was Sun Metals, and it was up 113% uh, in the summer based on the Stardust uh, Copper Gold Silver Scar, and it was a new discovery uh, or, a, or a new zone within a, an existing system. And uh, But they didn't produce results the same as the year before. And even though they've built this zone, and it is uh, uh, you know, an excellent story, and I think it will be the success we thought this year, uh, it's now down uh, 32%. So those were my two best, uh, best ones, uh, which are also uh, not so great at the moment. And the biggest disappointment was my top gold pick, which was Midas Gold. And it started high at the beginning of the year because of some newsletter pump that wasn't even sponsored by the company. Oh. They're permitting the Stibnite project, yes. Golden Antimony in Idaho. And that's going to produce three hundred to 400,000 ounces a year. And you would have thought that Trump being the president would have been good for the company. But when he did his uh, cause that government shutdown, it really delayed the timeline for this EIS oh. draft that they're supposed to file. Uh-huh. So that we're going to get in the first quarter of 2020. Mm. And then hopefully we'll get the feasibility study. And that's the other bad thing it's billion dollar plus capex yeah and with these tariffs on aluminum and steel uh the market's worried oh boy i wonder what that's done to uh-huh. the capex cost but it is still the, the 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 most advanced and biggest gold project in the united states mm. that's poised to really flourish and if we get gold going through sixteen hundred dollars uh uh this thing is worth a lot and i think even uh, they've done other things to to offset the capex uh, um, explosion, uh, so that one is still my favorite pick, even though it's down sort of forty percent on the year. Well, maybe that's uh, the best time for people to pay attention to it. Then uh, that you have the the courage of your conviction, John. I've known you for a long time, and you latch onto ideas, and you know it takes a long time uh, for new ideas to catch on sometimes in the marketplace. But uh, that's one I'm going to start watching. Thank you for that. I. I it is one I followed in the past and kind of gave up on it. Okay, let's let's. Uh, well, you know I'm notoriously early, also. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. It's I, best to just wait for Kaiser to be early and then, yeah, then and, follow him later. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, maybe sometimes, but um, the early bird gets the, the worm or something like that. Well, uh, concerning uh, the new year, John, what markets do you think are going to be good? What what metals markets or whatever markets, and what do you think we people should avoid? Well, I think uh, the uns- uncertainty is the big buzzword. Uh, uncertainty in G- global geopolitics, uh, uncertainty in domestic American politics. Uh, all of this is supposed to be good for gold. So I'm I'm on record as saying that uh, you know we could be 
over $2,000 by the end of this year, wow. especially if something outrageous happens, such as whatever the outcome is of the election in mm -hmm. November, mm -hmm. it is declared as false and rigged because some deep state has uh, undermined it. And if that starts to happen, I think uh, there'll be serious civil unrest, uh, all kinds mm -hmm. of hell will break loose, and the rest of the world's going to be watching in horror and say, oh boy, yeah. the U.S. dollar is going to lose its single reserve currency status even faster than the track it's already on. Mm -hmm. And so I think gold's just going to be under persistent accumulation this year. Mm -hmm. The one way I think out of this polarization that we've seen in the U.S. politics is the one area in which I think America has become ungrate or is certainly on a track of becoming ungrate and that is in allowing infrastructure to decay without being renewed mm -hmm. this is something that both parties see eye to eye on both parties have now demonstrated themselves as not caring a damn about how big the debt is mm -hmm. so whatever both sides should get together and say we need to renew america's infrastructure that creates local jobs and it also creates a future for the younger generation, the post-boomers, people born after 1964. Because another problem I see is this uh, intergenerational divide between the boomers and everybody younger. And the boomers kind of say, well, we're not going to be around to suffer the consequences of yeah. climate change. Yeah. So please don't divert any of our resources uh, uh, to solve something that may already be a hopeless cause. In the eyes of some, is a complete fabrication by some sort of a socialist uh, cabal. Mm -hmm. So if we get infrastructure renewal going, that will get rid of the concerns that the global economy is going to tip into a downturn as a result of uh, trade wars. Uh, I think the conflict between China and United States is real. I think mm -hmm. China is turning into an absolute authoritarian police state. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified that that might become the model for what the United States wants to event eventually mm -hmm. become. Um, but turning around this perception that the, the base metals on that are all going to get lower, that's key. And if we get this type of infrastructure renewal, then we will get the um, strength in both gold, because obviously uh, the conflict between China and the United States and the great power gain is not going to go away. Um, but we will also see the debt go up. We will see demand for raw materials go up. So we could have almost something like that perfect world we had in the super cycle when both uh, uh, metals were going up because of the, the big China China expansion and also gold going up uh, as everybody's wondering, oh boy, where is all this leading? Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, very, very interesting. It certainly uh, is in concert with uh, Michael Oliver, who's on our show, is very bullish on the on the commodity sector, the whole commodity sector. Well, anyway, let, what's your best guess? Uh, not your best guess. Let's not put it that way. What's your best pick uh, for 2000 and uh, 2020? Uh, did, did I hear you say Midas Gold, perhaps? No, that's my, my favorite uh, sort of gold stock to, to link to uh, mm -hmm. gold going up. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of like watching paint dry right now. No, the one that I'm most excited about now, and I do have a significant stake in it, is Nevada Exploration. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. That's the groundwater story, which yes. we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. They spent 15 years in the, in the desert uh, applying this. Uh, in late 2018, they drilled the South Grass Valley project. They discovered a, a lower plate window that was altered, oxidized. It had been mm -hmm. pumped by carlin-type fluids. Uh, it's, it does, they don't yet have the gold ore grade that we need. But this thing, if, if they go back and they're planning to do this, go back this year with RC drilling for grade on the four targets that have been revealed through all this geological information created by the 11 core holes they drilled last year, this could at a minimum, deliver a Carlin, a Cortez Hills equivalent, which is 5 million ounces of high grade, which would be worth two, 2 billion. But what surprised them was the scale of this system. It's as big as the North Carlin District, which is 50 million plus high grade ounces. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about something that potentially goes up, uh, you know, 10 to 100 times just based on a Cortez Hills type of a, mm -hmm. a discovery. But if it becomes apparent that they've got an entire new district, uh, then, well, we're talking insane thousand bagger type numbers. Mm -hmm. But it's even better because it's out, it's in an area that people don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's outside the area of interest box and Barrick and Newmont uh, uh, 
drew for their uh, Nevada gold mines, JV. If they find something here with this method, it blows all of northern Nevada wide open. These guys know of a dozen other places where they got anomalous kicks, so they'll probably run out and stake that. Hmm. But other companies will say, wow, this method works. There's all this basin land in northern Nevada that's not owned by Barrick and, and Newmont. It's going to be a fantastic uh, uh, gold rush, uh, and it's great for America, too, because finding there's another 300 million ounces hidden in northern Nevada. And people assume it's all on Nomont and Barracks ground. But if it's in all these other June, other land that's open with this new method, well, then it becomes very exciting to explore for another 300 million ounce endowment. And that could come in very handy down the road when the U.S. dollar is no longer the single reserve currency. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've been watching this for quite a while. And uh, so what's the market cap with it? It's very tiny, I guess, right? I think there must be almost 100 million shares fully diluted. It's trading around 26 cents Canadian. Okay. So, so, so it's a 20, $25 million thing. That's why I say a, mm-hmm. you know, a hundred bagger if you find something that's mm-hmm. Cortez Hills. Even higher if uh, there's like multiple Cortez Hills in the yeah. system. But again, it's cheap right now because the market says maybe these fluids just blew through this entire system yeah. and didn't leave the gold mm-hmm. behind yeah. anywhere. Well, so that's why that first ore grade interval on one of these targets will be like this uh, blows the lid off the whole thing. All right. Well, uh, folks, this is one, I guess, if you uh, if you sign up for John's letter, you can learn more about fascinating ideas. John comes up with things that are very early, uh, you know, concept uh, situations that are very fascinating, very interesting. Sometimes it takes a long time, uh, but uh, when they hit, they can be very, very big and uh, this is an exciting one, John. It's one I've looked at in the past, and I guess I don't have the patience of a Job like you do, so I didn't stick with it, but it's certainly something I might come back and take a look at again. As you say, it, sort of joking that maybe what you do is w- watch what John buys and then just wait and wait and wait, and then at some point, boom. <laughs> so, CJ, a stock like this, it'll waken up, it may double. It may be a better buy when it's doubled and tripled from yeah, the current sure, level that sure. right now, because yeah. they just may never get that ore grade interval. So it is definitely one to watch very right. closely because of these multi-scale implications of this story. All right, very good. We'll have to leave it go with that. Thank you so much, John, for spending time with us and sharing some of your ideas. It's certainly fascinating ideas, and uh, we'll look to do it again sometime. 